I got a story about two bad tractor dealers that you don't want to miss, so stay tuned. Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in tractors, post frame construction, and homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in on the conversation? Those of you that watch this channel on a regular basis know that I've been looking for a tractor for well over a year. I built a pole barn to keep it in. I've watched dozens of videos to teach myself about the features and benefits of different brands. I've interviewed some of the top dealers in the country, including Neil Messig, Doug Varenberg, and Mike Schramke. I interviewed Tractor Mike. I even read his book twice. Finally, I made my decision on what tractor I was going to buy. What it was is insignificant for this story. The first thing I needed to do was find a dealer that had the tractor. So I went on Tractor Buy Net and found a dealer that had two of the model that I was looking for. So I sent an email to that dealer telling them that I wanted this particular tractor and what implements I wanted to go with it and gave them all the information on how they could contact me. I don't hear anything for a couple of days, so I call the dealer, I ask for the sales department, and I explain to the guy that I had sent an email. He said, oh yeah, I got that email. It went to the service department by mistake. I was just going to call you. Only problem was, he couldn't find the email that he was talking about. So I gave him the information all over again, and he said he would get it back to me in a day or two with a quotation. A week goes by, I don't hear anything, so I call him. Who is this, he said. So I tell him, and he goes, oh yeah, I remember, I was going to get you a quotation. Well, here's the deal. I had a building blow over on my property in that last big storm, and I've really been preoccupied with that. I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll say a prayer for you. I figured, what the heck? How much longer can it take to say a prayer when I'm already praying for a tractor quote? Sure enough, a couple of days later, I did get a quote in the mail from him. It wasn't on a formal quotation. All it was was the information written in text form. It was a lump sum price for the tractor and the implements. There were no catalog numbers at all as to what the implements were and no individual pricing. So after some coaxing, I didn't get a formal quotation, but I at least did get the information in an email form that I was looking for. So I told him, before I buy the tractor, I want to be able to come and sit in it. And he says, oh, we sold those two tractors quite some time ago. <laughs> Why have we been going through this whole process when you don't even have the tractor? Maybe you should have told me that little detail. So he says, I've got a tractor coming in next week that's just like it, but it's already been sold to somebody else. But when it comes in, I'll give you a call. You can come by and sit in it. I said, fine. Week goes by. I don't hear anything from the guy. So I call him up and he says, who is this? And I tell him and he goes, oh, that tractor went out days ago. The guy's already picked it up. So, he says, let me see when we're going to be getting one of those tractors in. And he goes all the way up to September 15th and says, we're not going to have one. Then he says, let me look and see if there's any other dealers that have one. And sure enough, he found a dealer that had the tractor I was looking for. And he goes, listen, why don't you go by and see the tractor at that dealer? And if you like it, you can buy it from that dealer or you can buy it from me. Like, that's going to happen. So as soon as I hang up with him, I call the other dealer and tell him all the things that I need in terms of the features of that particular tractor and what implements I had a need for. And he says, come on over. I've got it. You can check it out. So Karen and I, we jump in the car and we fly over to that place a couple hours away. Sure enough, he's got the tractor. I sit in it. I take a look and I see that the loader's got a pin on bucket. And I said, well, this isn't what I asked for. And he says, well, we just got a loader in that's got a quick disconnect. I could switch that out and there'll be no problem at all. So I said, fine. 
So we go into his office to start talking about price. And I ask him, uh, do you fill the tires? And he goes, what? I said, do you put ballast in the tires? And he goes, well, we don't normally do that on a tractor that size. I go, well, if you did it, would you charge me something extra? And he said, yes. Then as we're going through this whole process, I tell him that I need a third function valve mounted on the loader. And he says, well, what do you need that for? And I said, well, someday I'm going to have a grapple and I want the convenience of already having it installed. He says, well, you know, I think we sold one of those once, but I don't know what the price was for it. I'm going to have to check with my boss and I'll give you a call tomorrow. And I said, well, why don't you tell me how far you've gotten on price so far? He did, and he was already $3,500 more than the rummy that I had just gone away from that was willing to sell me his tractor. Follow me on this. So the next day, he does call me and tells me how much the third function remote's going to be. And now he's $4,000 higher than the other guy. So I told him I'd think it over, really never intending to talk to him again. And the next day, I get a call from his boss who tells me, hey, I just found out that the manufacturer is giving a rebate that I didn't know about. Funny thing is, is I already knew about the rebate from looking on that manufacturer's website, and I also knew how much it was, and I knew he was offering me half the amount of that rebate. So at that point in time, I knew I was dealing with a crook. I told him that I was starting to look at Coyote tractors instead, and that's when he went off on me. He did nothing but badmouth that manufacturer, their reputation, their product, the fact that they were made in South Korea. And I go, wait a minute. <laughs> All the tractors just about are made in South Korea or Japan, except for yours, which is made in India. Well, he really didn't like that. And he basically said, I was stupid. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. Get me a quotation that has all these items on it with the specific catalog numbers of the implements and the individual pricing for each of these. And I'll take a look at it and I'll let you know. So I gave him all the information. He tells me that the guy will call me or, or email me the next day and get me the quotation I want via email. The next day, the guy does call me, but he calls and says, I just want to make sure that you got the email I sent. And that's when I thought to myself, I'm done with these guys. It's time for me to look at a coyote. If they're going to badmouth it that much, there's got to be something about it that's pretty good. If they badmouthed a product that badly without any specific reasons, I knew it was a product that I should look into. In all my 41 years I spent in sales, I have never had two guys more pathetic than these two people were. I just... Wanted to explain to him, I've got money, you've got a tractor, isn't there some way we can exchange the two? Apparently not. I cracked myself up.